That's what a, treat. a treat! I love it these is, treats. Uh, for Pete and I, and hopefully you today, um, as we are. There's really no reason for making this video other than it's a jolly good excuse to get two <laughs> amazing guitar amplifiers and therefore get all our expensive guitars and pedals and everything and see what yeah, they yeah, sound yeah, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess the big news is that Tone King are back with a revised version of their Royalist amplifier. We're mm -hmm. on Mark III, I think. Are we now? No, yes, we now? Mark III. Do you know what? I don't even remember. No, I've always loved these amps. I remember playing them at NAMM at some point. But before we go ahead and tell you all these stories of us getting it on at NAMM and doing stuff, then please like and subscribe. So 10,000 subscribers will give away something. There's some links below here. And when we hit a million, which we hopefully will this year, oh, maybe not. But let's help us out. You can win a real clone up there. Um, there's time span stamps, time stamps, time, time, time stamps for anything. Spanks. Isn't, spanks, that, what, time isn't spanks. that what ladies wear when they want yeah, to make their bottoms look well. smaller? It can and men wear spanks yeah. as well. Yeah, there's Manx. They call them Manx. <laughs> uh, down below, there's Manx down below if you want to hop to the next stamp or whatever. And um, right. love you loads. Yes, anyway, indeed. Go on. So, <laughs> now Tone King, uh, this was originally a, an amp brand started by a chap called Mark Bartel. Um, I like Mark a lot. Although he's no longer connected with yeah. Tone King, uh, he's doing his own thing now. So Tone King is now part of that sort of Friedman um, yeah. family with um, people like Brian Wampler and Dave Friedman and um, Dave Morgan, uh, Mike Soldano, Morgan yes, Friedman, Morgan absolutely. <laughs> um, so I think most people will be familiar with the Tone King range from doing more Fendery inspired kind of amplifiers. Yes, uh, Imperial Mark II oh. is. Mwah. One of our best-selling, you know, high-end amplifiers, a brilliant designed amplifier. Yeah. Um, what makes that stand out, I think, is the Iron Man attenuator, which um, Mark designed, yes. you know, and is a brilliant, brilliant uh, reactive load attenuator. You can buy that separately um, as well. You can, but that was built into the Imperial yeah. uh, Mark II, and 
So the Royalist is going after a more British sounding guitar amplifier, you know, think yep. obviously, you know, JTM type era. I absolutely uh, love the Marshall sound. stuff. Uh, all the way through maybe to sort of super lead stuff. Again, with the built-in attenuator. So it's a great amplifier if you need you need versatility in terms of volume. But not just one attenuator, Lee, in this one. Not just it's very one. clever, right? Two of them. One for each channel. Yeah. So oh. let's give you the features and Pete perhaps can play. Oh, before we get to it, obviously yeah. I'm plugged into a Magnetone Super 15. Um, the only real exciting news about these amplifiers, other than, oh my goodness me, it's such a joy to plug into one of these, yeah. is that uh, in 2023 they did a limited edition run of crocodile finish, not real crocodile skin, before all you uh, crocodile lovers there start hating on me. Um, crocodile done I would hate on it too. I don't want to kill a crocodile to um, yeah, make you can wear a, nice boots. To, to, and <laughs> I, don't, hats, yeah. I don't believe in all that stuff. I think, you know, crocodiles should just be left to be crocodiles. And it's okay to eat people. Um, well, uh, yeah, probably. Anyway, um, so yes, a faux crocodile finish in uh, either gold or purple. Oh, I should have got the purple I know. One, shouldn't we? Or blue. Um, we've only got left, I think, a blue head and cab or purple or gold combos. Links will be below. Anyway. I tell you what, this is one of the best looking amplifiers ever made, in my opinion. If you missed it, the Billy Gibbons... Um, uh, M80, Super, Super, yeah, uh, Super 59, yes, whatever. It, yeah. uh, anyway, the, the Billy Gibbons half stack, uh, Pete and I did a video on that last week, came out and literally there was only one stack to buy and two people bought it within like five minutes of each other online. So I'm guessing one of those guys was disappointed. Have a fight out in the parking lot. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about the Royalists. Yeah. Let's see if I can just get like some headline specs. Here. Are you a Royalist, Lee? That's what I want uh, to know. I probably would have been back in the day. I'm a bit of a fan of the Royal family, whether or not, you know, I believe in that you know, whether I believe in the monarchy over democracy, I'm not sure. Sometimes I think maybe they'd probably make just as good a fist of it, but hey. And tell you what, it's like, you do this now and then all you get your head chopped off. Let's you know, not get too political. Uh, right, so the Royalist is a 40 watt oh, guitar amplifier <laughs> that can either be purchased as a 112 combo or a head with either a matching 112 or 212 tell you what, cabinet. Oh my God, Lee, that would be amazing to have. Yeah. A 1212, 112, um, one, just a 112. I mean, I love this amp. It's so good. I've always loved it every time the, I plug it the Anyway. Information I have here is a, is a little light on spec. So if I've missed anything and you want to know about it, dive on over to the uh, Anderson's website. It'll all be listed there. But it's a two channel amplifier. Um, it would appear that the two channels are basically identical. So we're talking about volume A and volume B. Uh huh. Each uh, channel can have its own independent volume and can be pulled, the knob can be pulled out for, to engage a fat mode. Yeah. It's saying here the fat mode's ideal for single coil pickups. Oh, um, we have to try that. I'm excited. Then each channel can be set to a voice uh, to replicate either a 1964 tone, a 1967 tone, tone or a 1970 tone. tone. It's very specific, but I'm guessing, you know, more uh, as the years go by, it gets slightly gainier. In the martial realm of things. Yes. yes. What I love about this, it's ridiculous, right? So not only have you got one Iron Man attenuator in here, which is what the Imperial Mark II would have. Yeah. Actually, has the one. Imperial got one or two in it? It's got one. They, I think they it has all, only got one. Yeah, yeah. I think they all got, so only got one. the idea being here is you can attenuate each channel separately. So if you wanted a cleaner sound with less attenuation to give you lots of headroom, you yep. could. Mm -hmm. And if you want your overdrive mm -hmm. channel to be very attenuated mm -hmm. so you can really crank the jahibas out the amplifier, can't tell you, you how can. Excited I am, but very, you very cool. Um, right. And so, also there's a little high pass filter here that you can, you can click on and off like that. What's on the back? I think they've got an output like a. It's a, a line DIY. out, but not yeah. emulated line and no out. No effects loop. No effects loop. So everything pedal wise is going in the front. Yes. Okay, just like let's I just like hear it. it. Sons pedals, please, Mr. Okay, Pete. Sons so what, pedals. What channel are you on? I am now. So you've got the switch over here. And for Noel, if you're watching, because I know you want one of these, because you have probably to will. There is, this is, you've got, um, let I me feel start bad, from really. that I'm, side. I, I, I actually pretty sure Noel has bought some stuff from Anderson's, but that was prior to us constantly saying. Yeah, no, he's never going to buy just... anything again. He's going to go someplace else. <laughs> that said though, Liam now is shopping with us. Really. Yeah. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> and lighting it on fire in front of Noel's house. Uh, so you've got basically what Lee said, you've got a volume A, volume B with the push pull. Then you've got a treble, mid range. It's not mid, it's mid range. Mid range. You know, like mid range. Such a good hand. Like mid, mid, I love mid range chickens. Oh, that's what I always buy. Not free, Not free range, just mid range. Mid -range. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bass and presence. And then you got the two switches and then you got the attenuators. So I'm actually running everything at 12 o'clock here. Yeah. Boom. Even the volume? The volume, no, because it's so, 
incredibly loud that I didn't do so that. So is the attenuation switched off? No, so, it's not. Yeah, no. Can, I, can I switch the attenuation off? So New York, yeah. So let's go on channel Holy A. Holy mother of moly, this oh, is going to get loud. loud. So let me turn down to two o'clock here. Everything not two else is at 12 o'clock. You mean just two? Yeah, it says two, not two o'clock, two. Whoa, I can't believe that's. It's not. We've we got, got a headroom? Yeah. Holy moly. So this what, is... did we what did we hit on the thing? Oh! <laughs> I tell you what, this might just be my new favourite amplifier. It's, it's definitely loud. up there. And there's no reverb in this. And you're on the 1964 mode. So I'm in 1964. 1964, the year Anderson started. Exactly. There's, there's another. So let me just let me just go in the middle position. Yeah. And before we do anything else, I just want to hear these modes and see mm -hmm. what it actually changes the sound. So, um, 64, 67. Oh, slightly brighter. Yeah, I brighter. like it. I like mm -hmm. it. And then 70, even more brighter. So it's almost like a bright. Okay, so it's like a brightness come in, maybe... 64 is the or... softest, almost most fendery sound, isn't it? And then JCM the more, 45. Yeah, the more yeah, it goes it. towards the 70s, the yeah. slightly barkier and brighter it gets. Next, I'm just going to try the um, high pass filter. That only works That's when you... That's on the attenuator, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're, we're, we're not attenuating at all at the moment. Okay. So for our own hearing, we are going to have to attenuate <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> i tell you what I'll do before, I'll just click down as Pete's playing. Yeah, okay, so, so here's... Okay, so that's a 36 dB attenuation. So all of... We can talk over that, yeah, can't we? I mean, I always feel with these, on the one hand, amazing if you've need to play really quietly at home yeah. and you still want a really beautiful and you got the app <laughs> you got the money to buy one i think for. the flip side of it is by the time you're attenuating down this level you're just not moving the speaker enough and the whole essence of the amplifier becomes semi-pointless yes. i think we'd have to gun the amplifier a bit to have but the attenuation it's still, this low it's still, got that, it's still got that sound of it hasn't it i can uh, hear the i can hear the strings louder exactly than the amplifier. here's the next step up that's can okay. I just, can I just yeah. try the hyphen? It's one of those subtle things, Super isn't, subtle, it? Yeah. isn't it? We um, might, that might only become evident at high volumes. Middle here. That's where I had it before when we were playing in the beginning. Oh my God, it sounds good. Let's get this, I'm going to attenuate at sort of minus 15 dB. Let's crank volume A a bit. Mm -hmm. We'll go through the modes again, or the, the voicings. Here it is at what about you 12 o'clock. It's, it's five. Five is up. Okay. And then ten. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go actually one more step of attenuation up. I think we can... Man. So we're now attenuating oh. at minus nine dB. So this is our 1964 mode. Still everything with 12 o'clock, man. Yeah. Sixty-seven. Shit, that sounds good. Flip. <laughs> no pedals. Sounds so good. And nineteen seventy. <laughs> And I'm going to pull out this. Oh, yeah, we haven't even pulled out the fat yet. So I'm going we? to pull out the fat. My new favorite amplifier, I think. It sounds great. My God, it sounds and good. So channels A and B are, are voiced the I'm same. Got... So and let, uh, so the idea is you you perhaps you might have your channel A set up cleaner than than channel B or, or however you want to do yeah. it. 
But the attenuation thing is so clever, because I think if you really are going to gun Channel A, you need the attenuation turned up quite a bit. But of course, if you want Channel B to be your clean channel, or the other way around, yeah, yeah. you won't need that level of attenuation. No. It does in come in fact, the opposite. You'll, you'll, you won't want that level of no, attenuation. No, no. Um, I mean, it does come with the foot switch as well. That's so you your can, AB switch. Yeah, yeah, so I may be in here. Can we try just to go back to a click? This sounds so good, man. So I'm just going to go on channel B now. Flick that up yeah. there. Go on channel yeah. B. Take the attenuation all the way off. Oof, oof, right, so we're over me. here now. This is him. Yeah. yeah. So what I just wanted to go through these uh, EQ. You know, the EQ. Mm -hmm. So just having a middle position. Travel. Man, it sounds good. Mm. Uh, back to middle, and then you got the mid range. All the way down. Nobody needs that. Oh, all the way up, bass. All the way up. Not overpowering bass, it's Definitely just a good sound, it's, right? And then such a all the way down. Sounding out. Presence, all the way off. In the middle. I mean, there's something for everybody here, isn't there? Holy shit! So, Sorry. <laughs> get, get yourself a get yourself a good sound, and then show how it can be used as a pedal board. I think on, okay. on amps like this, where you've got to have reverbs and delay in at the front end, some people will be going, "Oh, what, what if you haven't got an effects loop?" Blah blah blah. Yeah. And I think again, as long as you get your mix settings and stuff on the reverb right, yeah, it's uh, okay. It's okay. And I think some amps are. So amps like this, mm. they're, they're because they don't have it, and they're just it, they're fine. They're designed to take it in the front and end. And again, if you're playing bigger gigs and all that kind of stuff, you, just, you probably won't have reverb. You don't need reverb. So, you're playing so, in a stadium, yeah. or you're playing like you know, like Noel. He'll play a big. You know, you don't. I bet need he it. doesn't need reverb pedals. Nah. He doesn't need reverb pedals, but I'm happy. I I've got remember a... in that video he did with uh, Mick and Dan <laughs> for that pedal show, ironically, he doesn't he spend the whole time going, he doesn't even really like pedals. I don't, he yeah, just maybe, wants yeah. But that's not the guns. point that he's selecting. Right, so I've got a flint on the floor here. I'm going to set it to 60s because we're in a 64. And I've just, <sighs> I'm dialing down the mix yeah. a bit. So you've got the spring. Fine. I'll turn up the mix a little bit more. Just want to see. And I'll set the presence at two o'clock. Oh, it's, it's, it's different because it's not the numbers are different on here. Let's put a, um, a ten. And all day long, all day. Man. So Every that was uh, an ER2 from a Thorpey. <laughs> uh, ER2 from Thorpey, so that was just uh, the uh, like a vibe. <laughs> That's a Bell Epoch Deluxe. Bit of delay. Man, it sounds good, doesn't it? Oof, and levels, I mean, not levels wise, gain wise, what would you so, typically? I mean, I mean you've got I, all sorts I, on here. Stick a Dane know. on here, it's a Dane Mark 1, because uh, there's still some of those left <laughs> if you want. the 
that is just. Mm. Man, that sounds great, it dude. Does sound great. Uh, let me just go a Halcyon Green. Got a bit more of that nasally. Yeah, not. And then okay. Cali 76, over, uh, just uh, compressor. I mean, it's, I kind oh, it's tube I kind screamer, of feel isn't like, it? I kind of feel like this amplifier doesn't need the bass tightening it up no. so much. I think no. it, it, it copes with it well. So just let, like blues let, breakers and stuff like that are probably go, um, good sounding. Green side of the protein. Kali 76. What is the what is the green side of the protein? That's the uh, nobles. Right. So they're, they're, their version of the nobles. The blue side is the their version of the uh, blues driver. So that's the blue side. Here's the green. Much more saturated. <laughs> I think. My God, I love it. I remember first meeting Mark. At, uh, at a NAMM show 10, 15 years ago. Nigel. And Tone King were, uh, had broken the mold slightly of selling really high-end expensive amplifiers, but yeah. them all being printed circuit board designs. Yeah. And I remember at the time saying to Mark, it's like, how do you even, you know, how do you justify using a printed circuit board here when all of your competitors are hand wiring their amplifiers well, at this price? Does. Well, I think this was almost seen even more expensive than that. And, and Mark yeah. was, Mark, gave me a great lesson in like printed circuit boards have just been given a bad name through r being used in really cheap affordable guitar yeah, yeah, amplifiers yeah. he was kind of like look you know if you want to you know if you go to a, a, a military grade printed circuit board manufacturer you know i'm talking about the type of printed circuit boards that they'll use in a spaceship you know so or like, an atomic bomb yeah i don't know about that but you know the uh, he's saying you, you know and you do the board layout <laughs> yeah. properly so you understand that but you tvs know, you, and all that stuff yeah yeah, yeah but you say you want you understand that yes if you put this component Tesla's. near this component yeah. stuff like that, it's going to give you unwanted noise but yeah. if you put this component far enough apart yeah, yeah. it won't and he just basically said look you just have to know how to build a good quality printed circuit board. Yeah. and then once you've done that and you find the right manufacturer for it yeah. you can consistently make super super high quality amplifiers and it's more probably more reliable actually well i i mean that that might be you might get some text saying you know ultimately i suppose changing out components that easier are hand-wired yeah. might be easier yeah. than if they're on a board yeah uh, i suppose it depends on how easy it is to get to the board but yeah you know there's an absolutely no reason why a print a high quality printed circuit board amplifier won't sound great and give you years of fantastic reliability but look exactly so i'm just gonna go to the other side i just need to go to the other side go on then just really <laughs> what the no pedals again no pedals <laughs> That's maybe where the house is. Blue the, side the of the... Thing. Oh, hang on. It boosts into it. Long and do that all day long. <laughs> Holy smokes, what an amplifier! <laughs> Let's wow. just take a minute. That's well done. Right, let's talk about the Magnetone Super 15. Um, Magnetone is is a is this unusual brand, I think, in terms of its sort of folklore and stuff, because it obviously was around in the 50s as an American mm -hmm. American brand. I'm not sure it ever 
got quite to the sort of the fame of, of obviously, you know, your Vox Fender Marshall kind of stuff. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Um, I remember first hearing about Magnatone through Phil X, who... Um, Fretted Americana. This is pre the Bon Jovi gig, yeah, when he was at Fretted Americana. Yeah. And he was a massive fan of these old Magnatone amplifiers. Mm -hmm. Bizarrely influenced by the fact that so was apparently Eddie Van Halen. So, um, now, so, and then Magnatone was, was purchased, um, I don't know if it, whether it was insolvent prior to that or whatever, but it was purchased maybe 10 years ago by a mm -hmm. guy who's obviously reinvested like a crazy amount of passion and I'm sure a fair few dollars as well into sort of reigniting the range. Oh, yeah. So we've got this beautiful range now, but 100% Magnatone sits at that creme de la creme level oh, yeah. of amplifier. There's, there's, it's all beautifully made. Um, reassuringly expensive those kind stereo of stuff. ones we did the video if you want to watch that video just that watch the up here sound is so it? good man so this yeah. is the super 15 this is the probably the best selling combo in the range it's a 15 watt el84 loaded um range of amplifiers whether mm -hmm. it's a, a head or a combo um it's got two inputs but not channel switching input one is slightly higher gain than input two so you take your pick easy easy then i've got um gain master treble middle bass and presence so again no uh, reverb built in there probably are some slightly more modern features on the magnetone compared to the royalist so mm -hmm. we do have an effects loop albeit i'm not using it today um we have a speaker compensated output you can run this uh, in silent mode. So in other words, there is a dummy load you can put on the power amp and even run headphones out the back of this amplifier if you want to. <sighs> Sorry, yeah, go on. So I'm using Les Paul. I'll probably switch over to a Strat in a minute. Everything's at 12 o'clock. It's like the 12 o'clock test, right? Of just, does it sound good at 12 o'clock? <laughs> great sound as it well. It is a great sounding amp. It's a great sound. It, it's bizarre. It's one of those weird sounds where I oh, kind of don't even amp feel now. like I'm missing the reverb. I mean, I probably am missing the reverb. You always miss the whilst reverb. Whilst the notes are playing, it's so full sounding. It doesn't feel like it needs you know, it. when you're on the phone to me, it's like, I, I need some reverb on, on this phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I could, I mean, again, I, I think I just, I don't even really want to do anything because that's how I would have it. I would want to get clean sounds by just rolling the volume and picking softer. I'm not even sure I need to roll the volume down as much as just pick no, softer. Just... And then if I want gain, I just pick harder. Exactly. That's the dynamicness, if yeah. that's a word, that you get with these amps mm -hmm. that are just better, Me better build, better quality. All everything is better quality. You get that, that sort of that you can you can you know. You can I've gone Mick Taylor on it now. I've gone two o'clock on everything except master and presence, which is still twelve o'clock. <laughs> Did you Does have that it, I mean, guitar I... plecked, by the way? I did, yeah. You did? I'm just trying to look. I think I'm, I think I'm quieter than you. I should be. I, I mean, I was pushing it. Yeah. Can you just, can you do the gain down and then the master up so we see if we can get any clean tones out of it? Yep, so oh, gain is a... now at um, nine o'clock, master is at three o'clock. That's a useful... Put a bit of reverb on, but again, this is all going into the front end. I think you could even have a bit more gain on that and it still stay fairly yeah. clean. Yeah. Oh, it's that bass end. A 
Let's just turn that master volume down slightly. So I'm going to go back to my sort of 12 o'clock settings. See, I like it like, I like, it like you had it better. Really and then add in like a... All right, the, okay. Then, so I'm and then go, add in a gain and see what we it got, does. We got gain about 10, 11 o'clock, master about one or two o'clock. Gain. All the tone controls about two o'clock. Yeah. Um, a little bit of reverb coming from a cloud burst, but not on its ensemble modes. Now for the it's nice, isn't opening, it? maybe a bit more decay on that, just a little. Yeah. Now again, that's a really good I could reverb, just right? use hmm. a boost. So the boost I'm using is the Victory Duchess because it's got a bit of EQ. So again, as well as a gain boost, I've got a slightly different shelved okay. kind of EQ. So there's no, there's no gain coming from the pedal there. That's just basically pushing the amp harder. The first kind of gain pedal as such I've got is the Kernham Ridge. I never really know how to describe this. I, I, the, the mood control on the Kernham Ridge is in the sort of the, the fuzzy line bit. So, and then the tone controls are, oh, well, look, you know, about to get a picture of this. It's sort of, you can see what I mean. Sounds so good as yeah. well. So again, That's my new favorite amp. Now. Not not too high a gain on the on the Kernum. Stepping on the Dane, I then get slightly more gain. I can boost the Dane. I mean, don't really need to get more dirty, do we here, but... Wow! I think I had, at one point, I was using the boost into the Kernum. From the brick. There's so there's wow. something about higher gain amplifiers where where you're really dropping the input gain in so that you just get that lovely Tell you what, that's why I've been using the, the little sister so yeah. much recently because yeah. it's that sort of JTM, yeah. just on the edge of just of, of yeah. the edge of arriving, you know. So anyway, the the Super 15 that's... is if you want one of the limited edition crocodile finishes ones, they're going to cost you sort of upwards of three thousand quid. I don't think we've actually got many left. I think there's maybe three or four um, across all three colours left. So um, be quick with that one. How much is this? 29 I think. That so is very so, similar priced. Yeah, probably a little bit more expensive because the, the regular black version of this is about 2500 Okay, right, right, right. So a little bit dearer for the uh, Royalist, but of course it's got it's louder and got more features in it. So, but but um, that I sounds tell you what, so good though. What we didn't say, I'm, I'm going to find the one negative with the Royalist. It's blooming heavy. Check the weight in the specs, but it's like AC30 level heavy. Uh, whereas the Magnetone is more like, I guess, some like Fender Deluxe type heavy but scene. It's worth it, man. Oh, for sure. I, for me, it doesn't matter how heavy it is, but it sounds that good. It doesn't yeah. matter. No, I, I, I mean, look. It's like having a I slightly mean, does, heavier does girlfriend. Does the Magnetone get bonus points because the logo lights up Absolutely. and you switch it on? <laughs> I mean, the look-wise, that looks the best, in my opinion. But if you, oh, is that, 
I mean, no, that's I, a controversial I agree. thing. If you do a head and a cab, I've mm -hmm. seen these yeah. in, say, a different color scheme, so you can get like a different color on it, say purple well, or pink sure or whatever, Tone and then in the head, they do. So color runs, won't they? Color runs, yeah. They run in the in the. Oh, I'm gonna. I have to just try. Man, these are two amazing. You amps. know what I like about Magnatone, and they do this on a lot of the pr goes pretty much every. I love how the, the, the speaker grill goes around the front. It just looks a million it's dollars. Amazing. And I'm gonna. It's, I'm and gonna it's have not to... a million dollars, by no. the way. Just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try a telecast then to hear because we didn't do that. So you yeah. can. Oh yeah, just... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna strat up now okay. and just see. Let what me happens. do this telly by new chair strap. This is just the telecaster. <laughs> So Have you got the fat thing that you can pull out now? Have you done it? Oh, flipping flop. There you go. That's on the 1964. It's the same thing I was saying before. It's a it's a fairly low signal going into an amp with a fair amount of grit on it. Yeah. It, you know, it's the, that sound. That sound, <coughs> in my opinion, it's the new it's the new black, isn't it? Because orange it's is like, the new black. Or, orange is the new black. Not orange amp brand. No, orange. not orange. But oh because my God, it's so confusing. It's so confusing. <laughs> but I think I used to play this clean, clean, clean thing all the time. Yeah. But I'm getting that little bit of driven thing in there, yeah. and I really like it, man. I, it's just. Just you can cool. kind of see like the you know the Joe Bonamassa thing of just like yeah crank the amp and slim. then do it on the volume. But even let me get some bit more. <sighs> Did sound good, man. Or does sound good? The uh, deco, yeah. just a little bit of wobble in the end of it. Oof. Mick and Dan need to get one of these. Absolutely, I think it's their kind of. It's their kind thing. of thing. So uh, let me go to channel B uh, with a little bit more drive on it. Woof, woof. Oh goodness me! Hang on. Uh, channel A. Sorry, I'm on channel A. The 1970s. It's got that glassy. To see how this records. We've got the 57 and the Royal 121 on there, so yeah. again, I mean, if it sounds half as good as it does in the room, it's going to sound hey. epic. Um, so let's see what this little bad boy does. So I'm going to pump the gain up a bit because I've got uh, single coils. So do that position four. Four? Pos no, pos position two. Yeah, four, Sorry. that's four. Oh, that bell like, if you play like with your... I want some... Oh. 
I think we just need to play out, man. I There's think not you're much right. Else to say, is Let's there? just play out. Uh, holy what mother. Is it, what does we do? He does in Kawa. He goes, so should you shortlist this? Should you uh, consider it? Or should you just go ahead and buy it? <laughs> I think you should just go ahead and buy any of these amps. And you, if you got the money, if you got the money, go ahead, write, go ahead and write and buy it. Then this is, it's this level of, I think, when you've played through a really great amplifier, wow. fairly loud, with your favorite guitar, it's that's when you go back to plugins and it's all a bit like, hmm. yeah. you know, like for all the wow when you first play a plugin, you go, oh, that sounds amazing. That sounds great. When you actually do the, I still think, and it and it's not just the tone, it's the whole thing. It's, it's sensation. The, it's the, the speaker and the volume yeah. and the air moving yeah. and the, 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 just the range of flavors that are in there. Yeah. As good as digital is, I still think this is the best. Consider anyway. this. Co consider this. Um, um, what do you call it? Comparison. Having a <laughs> or having <laughs> easy. That's what the difference is, right? <laughs> and on that note, links are below for this. And please like and subscribe. You can win something every ten thousand subscribers. I'm Pete. I'm Lee. <laughs> Let's jam. Let's do it.